on a hot day because with all this butter, the dough will soften a lot. A rolling mill is to metal what Julia's rolling pin is to pastry, a tool for changing so the thickness you of your material. But since we're not working with Julia's buttery dough, our roller has to have a heavy metal framework that rigidly holds two polished steel rollers a given distance apart. When the gap between the rollers is adjusted so it's slimmer than the thickness of the metal being passed through it, the metal is redistributed so it's thinner and longer. If something's placed on the surface of the metal before being passed through the rollers, it can impress the surface, creating a texture, a roller print. This is an extremely easy way to get texture on a large piece of metal, but you only get one try at it, so it's also an extremely easy way to ruin a large piece of metal. So it's important to plan out and test your process before committing to it on a large piece. The material you use to texture your metal is called the matrix, but some things will just squish without making a mark. Others will spread out so much that they crush down, making a blurry impression. And some will make a texture so subtle you can't tell anything was even done. But many things will eventually compress down to where they're dense enough to make a mark on your metal. So a surprising variety of things can be used. Never use anything as a matrix that you care about. It is destroyed in the process. The most likely matrices are ones made of tough material with a distinct pattern, often with clear positive and negative spaces. But you can never tell for certain what will work until you try it. So try things on small pieces of metal, experiment on scraps, and always test your matrix out on a small piece of the same metal and thickness that you intend to use on a larger form. Never use anything that could shatter under pressure like plexiglass. Never use anything that might damage the steel rollers without sandwiching it between two sheets of metal. If you use a tough matrix that's thicker than your metal, it may actually pinch all the way through. Because the matrix is displacing metal to make the texture, this process will change the shape and dimensions of your workpiece. If at all possible, it's best to texture the material before you even saw. Anneal your metal. Turn the wheel at the top of the mill to adjust the space between the rollers. Your metal should just barely fit if you wiggle it. Place your matrix on your sheet and try cranking it through. It should require some force, but not so much that you need two people to do it. Loosen it up if it's too tight. Crank it through as smoothly as possible. If your matrix might damage the rollers, sandwich it between two pieces of sheet. If the matrix is especially thick, as when you're sandwiching a matrix between two sheets, or using a matrix on both sides of the metal at the same time, adjust the rollers so the whole stack will just barely fit if you wiggle it. Then take the stack out and turn the wheel a quarter turn clockwise to tighten it further. As you can see from this last example, sometimes the layers don't stay aligned. Best way to avoid this is to keep things flat, balanced, and annealed, and glue or tape the layers together. It still doesn't always play nicely though, no matter how careful you are. Sometimes you just have to live with the result.